engines being prepared for that aircraft. Um, I've been building this one up myself. So where what I wanted to uh, talk about here, so what we've got here, this is just doing the ignition timing. So we've got marks here, we established top dead centre, then at a point before top dead centre, a known point, which we've predetermined. Uh, we set the crank there and then we um, click out the hall sensors with a little hall indicator. But that's not the crux of this topic here. Uh, what I want to show is um, here we've got, uh, I want to talk about intake pipes and intake drains and how important they are. So as you can see here, I'm fitting the intake pipes. That's why I thought I'd make this video. So fitting the intake pipes. And you see the two lower cylinders, there's a, there's a, there's a port here, and that's to drain oil out of the intake uh, pipe. That is really important uh, on a radial engine, particularly our engine with its relatively small combustion chambers, which fill full of oil quite easily and will bend rods. Now, we haven't seen a lot of bent rods, but those that we have seen have been devastating, and it is a phenomena that must be content, uh, taken into consideration. It's unavoidable. Uh, well, bending rods is avoidable, but you must take into consideration the, uh, the hydraulic lock problems. And most people, when they focus on hydraulic lock, they just concentrate on hand-propping the engine. Um, and they think, oh, no, I've hand-propped the engine, it, it'll be safe now. Uh, the pistons have cycled through and there's no oil in the, in the, in the combustion chambers. Well, when there's oil in the combustion chambers, it's very easy to detect. It just locks the piston up solid. Obviously, liquids can't be compressed. And that's very easy to do. And in fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's very unlikely that you will actually bend a con rod on oil that's already jamming, locking up a cylinder because the starter motor just can't get any momentum. Now, of course, we always crank these engines. Uh, our procedure is to always crank them on dead mags. So if you have made a mistake on your hydraulic lock procedure, and you come against oil, you rather than damaging the engine or bending the conrod, you will just simply stall the starter motor. The problems start when you actually drive through a hydraulic lock on the engine's uh, power after it's fired. That's where it gets an enormous amount of power, you know, a thousand times more than the starter motor, you know, a lot more than the starter motor, and it just bends itself. But I'm going to say that oil, I've got nearly, I don't know, 25 years' experience with this engine now, and I'm going to say that I would say... We've never really seen any major concern with oil in the cylinder. As I said, that's easily detected with hand propping. And the starter motor won't drive through it as long as the engine doesn't start. It'll never drive through. Uh, the starter motor will just stall. So that's oil in the cylinder, already oil in the cylinder, right? The biggest booby trap on radial engines, and, in particular, and, the, and this one as well, is oil that wells in the intake pipe, right? Now, if you have these drain taps shut, you can do all the hand propping in the world. You can turn the engine over a hundred times, and this oil will not be ingested into the engine because the valve, if you can see on this cylinder here, you can see, oh, you can't really see that well because it's not very lit. I'll get a torch. So you can see there's a valve there, and the, and the head of the valve is actually way up in the, in the chamber up here somewhere. So this oil here can never be ingested into, into the port because it's below the, it's below the valve's uh, head. So as you came propping the engine thing, I'm clearing all the oil, you're not clearing the intake pipe oil. See? You're not clearing it because that oil can be all the way up to here. You know, that combustion chamber is only a few cc's. So all that oil in there is just sitting in there and it can't go up above the valve. So you could hand prop, hand prop the engine to your blue in the face. And you will not draw that oil in, nor that oil in this one either, right? It just will not be drawn in um, because the, it just, the piston's got to pull it uphill against that, above that valve. And even when the valve opens, there's just not enough vacuum or drop in pressure for that oil to be ingested. And you can see the intake pipe, just how much, you know, so it goes there, about there. You can see just how much volume it's got. So you could have where my thumb is, full of oil still below the valve and and now the problem is if you don't if you hand prop the engine and think no nah, she's good to go let's start the engine and you haven't drained that intake that, that intake port there that, that valve we put a fitting on that if you haven't drained that and you think well there's no oil in the cylinders we're good to go what happens is once you start the engine the oil will be immediately ingested with a higher piston speed. It'll, it'll create the net required vacuum and it'll suck that oil into the combustion chamber as a column. The engine's now firing under its own power and bang, 
you've bent the rod because you didn't drain the intake pipes. So draining the intake pipes is absolutely number one. In fact, on engines today, we've got a little automatic system, which is a drop ball, which as soon as the engine stops running, the vacuum drops and the ball falls down and it opens that port. You still should check that the ball has dropped because it could jam, but that just takes you know a little bit more pile, a little bit more user error out of this scenario. We used to put wing nuts on here, and a lot of engines have still got like a drain tap on here with a wing nut. But if you forget to undo that, you know you, you're really playing Russian roulette. I would say without any doubt that oil ingested from intake pipes is the biggest nemesis, and it must be it must be factored into not just hand propping the engine, but hand propping the engine with both that intake drain and that one open, and on the nine cylinder there's a third pipe, the three lower pipes have actually got intake drains. So you can see side on there how, how, how much oil could be held below the, the poppet of that valve, which again you can see that's the valve stem and the poppet is right up in there, right up in there. So all that oil below that poppet of that valve can well in this intake pipe so you must drain it. Anyway, that's the importance of draining the intake pipes. Been meaning to make a video on that for a long time and uh, with this engine being built now, um, and I was at that stage, I thought, well, I could do that, so. Anyway, I hope you got something out of that. Um, check out our website, www.rotechradialengines.com. We've been building radial aircraft engines since 1999. We've built thousands of these things, so if you're interested in putting one of these on your home built, your Kit Fox, your Fly Baby, your RV, whatever, um, your biplane, just let us know. Give us a tingle. Okay, have a good day, and I'll catch you later. Bye.